to this week's edition of Hawk Talk. My name is Parker Robinson, and I'm joined by one of the fellow golfers at Dickinson State. Um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, where you're from, and what brought you to Dickinson? Okay, my name is Amy Kittleson. I am originally from Kildare. Uh, I'm a junior this year, and I mean, Thad is really what brought me to Dickinson. He got me into college golf, and uh, I first went to Bismarck State right out of high school, but Thad uh, really recruited me even these last two years while I was at Bismarck and brought me back to Dickinson. Yeah, you went and played that that two years at Bismarck State under Coach Herzog. Um, what was that experience like uh, getting into college golf? Uh, I mean, it was a great experience. I mean, it was, it was probably the best decision I made because it gave me so many opportunities that I had. I mean, I played in, an, in a National Junior College tournament for two years. And I mean, I learned so much from Herzog while I was at Bismarck. And I mean, it just made me that much better of a player to bring that back to Dickinson. Yeah, was it always the goal to go to a four-year school after you finished up there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I always wanted to complete my bachelor's degree and maybe even possibly move on after that. Yeah, and then you, you grew up in Kildare, so you're familiar with mm -hmm. the area. Um, was Dickinson an obvious choice to you coming sort of closer to home? Uh, yeah, it, it really kind of was. Um, I mean, Bismarck, it's still close, it's still in the area. You know, so, I mean, it, for me, it was pretty, felt pretty uh, good just to move a little bit closer to home again. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you played in that National uh, Junior College Championship. Um, what was that experience like, and what have you kind of learned from that going forward in your career? Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's an experience that, I mean, I, I really, really learned a lot from being down there and um, playing with just girls from, even other countries, because there's junior colleges, uh, especially in the southern United States, are able to bring in girls from like Korea and um, I know there. I think there was one from Sweden and stuff that they play exceptional golf, and it was just good to be able to learn from playing with girls like that, and you know, just being in that kind of setting really, really teaches you a lot about the game. Yeah, definitely, and then into your first year as a Blue Hawk here. Um, guys, we didn't have to travel very <laughs> far. Um, playing courses you're familiar with, how did that help you play in Jamestown, Heart River, and Bully Pulpit? Um, I mean, even being from the area, I really hadn't played Bully just before coming to DSU. And so, I mean, it was, it was a little bit different for me, but at the same time, it still felt like home and it helped, you know, knowing the courses, Jamestown, knowing Heart River and just being able to feel comfortable at those courses really helped a lot. Yeah, and as you kind of wrap up the fall season, how do you kind of evaluate your playing in the first half of the year? Um, playing was a little bit below par. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it definitely could have been better, especially uh, this weekend at conference. I know I definitely did not play as well as I could have. Uh, I think my biggest thing is just um, getting frustrated and not being able to come back out of it like I should be able to. And so that's something I'm really trying to work on towards the spring. And so just taking what I learned this fall, playing at this level now, um, and putting that towards the spring and being able to hopefully recover better after bad holes and just um, hopefully just more consistent playing. You know, taking the fact that, so I finally learned how to hit my driver this fall and taking that into the next spring and being able to maybe learn how to putt too while I'm at it. Yeah, and at conference you went 90-93 in the two-round tur two round mm -hmm. tournament. Um, what, what went well for you in those two days and then what went bad for you uh, that you want to improve mm -hmm. on? The front nine at Bully Pulpit was definitely the best for me. That back nine gets a little tricky out there and that's the second day it really kind of killed me that back nine. I just had a few bad holes and um, but I actually I started on the back nine more so so I was able to recover on the front nine which was really good. Yep and then moving into the off season it's your first uh, off season as a Blue Hawk but you grew up in the area you're familiar with mm -hmm. snow and so <laughs> yeah. you know how are you gonna try to keep up that uh, kind of momentum try to and keep improving throughout the off season. Yeah. Well, I mean, like Coach O'Donnell said, I think we're going to spend some time in the weight room and then spend some time with the simulator and stuff. So that'll be nice to be able to uh, have that technology there to help us throughout the winter. You know, hopefully 
try and work on my putting some as I can and hopefully just carry over or whatever where I've gotten my swing to this fall, hopefully just be able to work on carrying that over to this spring. Yeah, and then moving forward, um, what's your major and uh, what do you plan to do with that after school um, here? I really don't have a major yet. I'm currently declared as university studies, but I'm kind of tossing around a couple different ideas. I'm just not sure totally what I want to do yet. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Amy. Um, thanks to the whole crew out there at Bully Pulpit for helping out the DSU golf team this fall, uh, setting up that tournament. Um, we'll put our clubs away <laughs> at least for a little while until we get into the simulator and get into the uh, rec facility. Um, we'll be back after this talking about volleyball. Life is full of many successes, achievements, stages. Every year we grow, things change, and pretty soon we realize we want and need to do more. When you're ready for that next step, Dickinson State University will get you there. Find out how at dsublue.com. Welcome back to Hawk Talk for another Blue Feather Focus, the Blue Feather Athletic Association, the, the funding body for bringing DSU athletics um, from all over. One of our own coming from across the state. Go ahead and introduce yourself and what brought you, brought you to Dickinson? Uh, my name is Shelby Gustafson. I'm a senior. Um, volleyball brought me, oh, I'm from Fargo, so yes, across the state, eastern side. Um, yep, I started off just my parents wanted me to try out playing sports in college, and so this is my opportunity. They came here for volleyball, yeah. Yeah, and you're also a part of the Theodore Roosevelt Honor and Leadership Program. Mm -hmm. What's that kind of been like as you kind of end the end of your uh, time at Dickinson? Um, it's been a really good experience. It's opened up a lot of doors. Um, you meet a lot of different people that can help you out with different paths that you're trying to like figure out. Um, it's been really interesting. I don't know. It's been a fun experience, and going through it now, like I'm in my honor seminar class, which is a capstone project of your time here in the program. And it's just amazing to see like what I've been a part of and be able to, being able to say I was a part of that is pretty cool. Yeah, and it brings that group together like a family. Mm -hmm. You know, how has that helped uh, coming into school here? Um, really good, actually. Uh, like half my roommates are in the program as well, and I've met some really good friends too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then on the court, also your senior year, you hopped in your freshman year and started mm -hmm. contributing right away, so you, you don't have that extra fifth year. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's also good. Yeah. Um, so what's kind of the accumulation of your career been like? And what, when you look back on it, what are you going to remember most? Um, I'm definitely going to remember my teammates the most. They're definitely they're the people that you lean on during the successes and the rough patches. and. Uh, being able to build up, you know, the core group that I came in with. Um, we've stayed throughout, so we've been through a lot, but we've been on an upward, an upward slope, so we're getting there. Yeah, definitely, and coming into your senior year, do you feel like you're stepping into more of a leadership role as a senior, being, having been kind of where those freshmen, sophomores had been before? I think so, yeah, I think um, for each of our, us seniors, like, we kind of feel like that. We've been through, you know, um, like our freshman year wasn't the best, like in the sense like of our record. And so I think we're trying to really push forward in this program and kind of like our saying is like leave a legacy and we're trying to do that. Yeah, definitely. You got seven games left in Scott Gymnasium in the regular season. <laughs> um, you know, what does that place meant to you and how are you going to try to cherish each of those moments to finish the season? Um, I don't know, I didn't realize it was only seven. <laughs> that's, that's not that many. Uh, it's a special place. You know, it's where I've spent most of my time here. It's the reason why I'm here. And um, it's going to be really sad to finish up, you know, that last game. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it's been loud the last couple of years. What are you going to, what, what do you pitch to the people that, maybe are on the fence of coming out, what, what would you tell them to come out to a game? Um, I would say definitely come. We've had some pretty good student sections. Um, Storm the court, been 
super loud to the point where we can barely hear ourselves on the court. Um, I don't know. Just <laughs> it's a good it's a good experience, and it looks like the student section's having fun. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and then also you guys had a road game recently. You went and took on number two in the country, mm -hmm. Viterbo, yeah. um, but you took a set off them. How do you see the team kind of grow throughout this year so far? Um, I think our experience in Viterbo, it was really good for us. Uh, I mean, playing against a team that has a history and a reputation of being a great team and keeping that in mind and just being able to go out and like fighting with them and then taking a set off them, I think it really like helped us to realize like what we're capable of. And if we play that way against other teams, like what that means for us and what we can do with it. Yeah, definitely. And you guys have kind of a stretch of North Star games to finish mm -hmm. this year. Do you guys have any goals, any expectations going into that? I mean, every time we step on the court, it's doing the best we can, getting the outcome that we want, which obviously is a win. But um, definitely our goals, we, each, we all make like mini goals, I guess, for the game. So whether it's you know shutting down one of their hitters or it's something that we've been working on in practice, um, just we kind of build ourselves up like that many goals but definitely we want to try to improve our record and be a threat to other teams in the conference yeah definitely um, moving past volleyball your senior year what what's next for you beyond uh, Dickinson State um, I am currently in the application process for physical therapy so I want to go out to graduate school and I'm thinking the University of Mary, which I know is <laughs> iffy, but it's the graduate program, so it's a little different. Yeah, definitely. And do you plan to kind of stay in the game of volleyball in some sense, uh, help out in any um, level? I guess it depends on like what opportunities arise. Um, you know, we'll see where my life goes with that. Yeah, and you got a big homestand coming up. You got Dakota State and Bellevue mm -hmm. this Friday and Saturday at Scott Gymnasium. Um, what, what do you expect from that Friday, Saturday uh, series? Expect some good volleyball. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So make sure you come out and see that good volleyball at Scott Gymnasium. Mm -hmm. um, best of luck to you, Shelby. Thank you. Good luck um, you. as you finish your career and as you go on, hopefully, to grad school. Mm -hmm. We'll be back talking to Shelby's coach, Coach Hartman. Welcome back to Hawk Talk. We're joined by one of our fellow coaches uh, here. Um, your team started North Star Conference play probably not as strongly as they wanted, but you got a home game against Jamestown and you took a set from them. They're a top 25 team. Um, how was that first kind of stretch of North Star Conference games? Uh, well, we lost uh, to presentation and that was really tough. And then they came back the next week played Jamestown and we took a set off them and we lost all the other ones by a couple points. So it was frustrating to lose when you're that close, but at the same time, it's definitely giving them that confidence that they need to continue throughout the season. Yeah, definitely. Even in that presentation game, I think the first set went to 32-30. And so, <laughs> so you're right there on the edge. Yeah. You know, how are you trying to keep practice um, upbeat and trying to get them over that edge uh, to win a couple of sets. So what we've done in practice since then is put them in pressure-like situations in practice to finish strong in those sets and games and stuff and it's worked out really well so far so we're proud of the effort and attitudes that they've had and their determination to get past that hump of losing by a couple points and for whatever reason we like to play past 25 <laughs> points. <laughs> yeah just giving everyone the most volleyball possible yes. I guess <laughs> um, but you guys went on the road then and took on a, a pretty decent Waldorf team. Yep. Um, you know how was that first road victory? Well 
the first set we lost 10 to 25 mm -hmm. and it was just one of those moments where you looked at them and you had never seen that team before and you so we'd never lost that bad before and so uh, but coming back and to come back from that and win the next three was huge for our team and uh, they just did an excellent job at uh, on the road and uh, they really did. And Waldorf was a good team. I feel like everyone in our conference right now is pretty even, other than obviously Viterbo, they're second in the nation, but it's going to be a battle every single match that we have. Yeah, definitely. And at that point, after losing 10 to 25, what, what do you tell your team <laughs> to, to keep them going at that point? Uh, well, I was like, stay positive, <laughs> stay positive. Uh, but we just told them that set's done, it's over with. Uh, we got to get going now. It's it's our game. Never never let another team set the pace of the game. You guys play DSU volleyball, uh, not Waldorf volleyball. And they really came out in those next three and did that. So we were proud of their poise throughout that adversity that they faced. Yeah, definitely. And then you went and took on Viterbo, like you mentioned, the number two team in the country, um, and took the third set from them. Um, yeah. You know, what was that like playing with a team of that caliber? Uh, we just played really well. We stayed right with them, kind of a thorn in their side, I think. And, and even in that fourth set, we came out with a big lead and stuff, and they just were so rattled. And we just told them that they're the type of team that uh, they pass that kill and that's what they're used to and they have amazing an amazing setter amazing defense and amazing hitters and so if we can just play with them we'll win those long rallies and that's what we did in that third set and we played excellent defense uh, Allie Hurt really stands out in my mind and our blockers got hot at the right time and we started blocking at the net so it was exciting to see us compete that hard with such an amazing team yeah and like you said they're that pass that kill team yeah. um, so like you said defense what also goes into throwing them out of their rhythm there oh uh, we did have to make quite a few defense adjustments because uh, their hitters are very diverse and they could do a lot of different things with the ball so we made a, some quick adjustments and it, it worked out great for us yeah definitely and then you continue into the North Star play you take on Dakota State this Friday at home um, as well as Bellevue on Saturday um, tell us a little bit about those teams and what we can expect. Dakota State always seems like they're a dark horse team. They come ready to play as soon as conference starts, and so they're, they're going to be really good. They have really tall, dominant front row, and um, obviously their defense is always scrappy. So it'll be a battle with Dakota State for sure. And then Bellevue is ranked 19th in the nation right now. And so getting to play another nationally ranked team is going to be a great opportunity to see where we're at as far as that goes. Yeah, definitely. And I think it says something about the North Star having those three top 25 teams. Mm -hmm. um, where do you guys see yourself trying to chip away at those teams throughout the rest of this year? What's kind of the goal? Good question. Yeah. <laughs> we just want to compete with them, for mm -hmm. sure. We want to compete with them. But like I said, everybody's good right now. And so we can't underestimate anyone in our conference. And we just got to go out and be ready to play every single night. Yeah, definitely. And then looking at your own team, you mentioned Allie Hurt stood out in that Viterbo game. But have there any been any other uh, happy surprises that you've seen out of your players that have kind of stood out so far this year? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Shelby is one of them for sure. She's hitting, I mean, an average of 300 a night. And so it's amazing what she's done and how she's progressed into that middle blocker position. And uh, Kylie Hadley always stands out. She's playing really well. She's a six rotation player. But we also have a lot of underclassmen that have really stepped into a big role. Uh, Sage Collins had her red shirt pulled due to injury, and she played against Viterbo and got a couple blocks on their stud outside hitters. So it was exciting to see uh, the freshmen kind of advance and get better with every single game that we play. Yeah, and how do you see kind of, like you mentioned, Shelby, and then you have Shaley, a, a couple seniors. Mm -hmm. How has their leadership been helping Sage and some of the other freshmen along? Oh, they've done an excellent job. Uh, Shelby, obviously, 
leads in the front row, as well as bringing everyone together on the court, all six people. But Shaylee's definitely the back row voice, and she helps direct everybody so that uh, we're all on the same page. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, thanks for coming in, Coach. Thanks, Parker. <laughs> yep, make sure you come out to Scott Gymnasium Friday against Dakota State, I believe at 6. Yes. Yes, and then uh, Saturday, Bellevue at 6 as well, um, following the football game there. Football went to Mayville this past weekend, and they beat up on them 52-7. to seven. Um, They'll be on a home stretch here, taking on presentation this Saturday, so make sure you come out then. Also, make sure you keep an eye on dsubluehawks.com for all the latest in athletics, as basketball is only three weeks away, so we'll keep an eye on that. Until next week, Hawks are up. <laughs>